our potential It's exponential Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode. Today I have Connor here and Connor, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jack. Of course. And we just had this uh, kind of event down in Miami close by here a couple of days ago about giants and all these crazy things, these news, you know, articles and all these th posts. What do you think about this, Connor? <laughs> so I saw the video, right? People yeah. are talking about like shadow, alien, giants, whatever this is. I've seen the video. Yes. It doesn't really convince me of anything. Just kind of some smoke moving around. What, what the police are saying is three cops walking together. Looks like this big, tall, you know, tall giant creature. But uh, it doesn't look like much to me. I didn't see him either. And there it was, was like cop cars, right? Is that the video you saw? Mm hmm. Okay. So, yeah. There was a big riot going on that night. A lot of people throwing fireworks off. Now, a lot of people are pointing to how many cops responded to the thing as, like, evidence of something supernatural, extraordinary. Right, but, they're uh, all showing up for... There was, like, 100 cop cars, way, yeah. way more than, than that, anything That's strange, normal. for sure. It was New Year's Day, and people were throwing a lot of fireworks off in a mall, so it was kind of smoky. A bunch of cops responded. Now, I wasn't there, exactly. you know... But, uh, we need more data. Like that's right. Like <clears throat> it's hard to come to conclusions of this. Mm -hmm. But I, it is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like, especially with having you on. Like you research this stuff, right, Connor? You have a so, YouTube channel. I was telling you, it didn't look like much to me, but it's a good opportunity to talk about how Miami, not only Miami, Florida in general, was home to uh, a couple races of very large, large people. So, you know, six and a half, all the way up to 12 feet tall is what people were finding. Giants. Back in the burial mounds of Florida. Seriously? About 100 years ago, 150 years ago. What? They were pulling bones out that were one and a half times the size of a tall person. So Human bones? Yeah. What? Where? All over. Wow. So, you know, down in Miami, downtown, there's Brickle. Right, yeah. and there's Brickle Key. There used to be what was known as the Brickle Hammock. So back around 1930s, there were bones being pulled out of there of very, very tall people, like nine, nine feet. Whoa. So, when they were developing it up, like for Miami, really? Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. And Miami, some of the Keys, all the way up to Palm Beach, used to be inhabited by an ancient people called the Tequesta or Tequesta, however you want to say it. Wow. And that's where we are right now, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's right, right across the, Tequesta, the, yeah. the intercoastal. It's called Tequesta, the town. Mm -hmm. Tequesta was the native people. Yep. They were giants, you're saying. They were pretty tall. So what? maybe their ancestors were the giants. But uh, right. people hear giant and they think of Hollywood, like 20 feet tall, King Kong, things like that. Right. And we're not really talking about that. We're talking about something that's still compatible with the average human being, right? Reproductively, so, <laughs> so, so to speak. Yeah, interesting. Just bigger, but, just taller. Yeah. But not shadowy figures. Shadow, maybe. No, but, you know, we can also get into UFO or alien a little bit. I'm, I'm not here a, for it, yeah. I'm not a believer in the typical sense. You have know, you seen them? So I have when I was younger, wow, yeah. Oh, yeah. What did you see? I have too. <laughs> let's, get, let's get into it. We can get into and that. by the way, I didn't really know about where to like. If you're listening and you're like, "Wow, where the hell are they going with all this?" I did. I was always like skeptical or whatever you want to say until I saw them, mm -hmm. until I found out some more data. So I think if you just Connor has some really interesting stuff. So I just say be open, man, because this is this is good. So what was your UFO experience? So I was around fourteen ish. Okay, maybe a little older than that. 14, 15, around there. Were you with, with someone? Me and three friends, right? Wow. David, Jake, and Josh. I think I believe <laughs> that's who I was with. Not your brother. He was not there that night, no. And um, we were on at a school that we used to go to out in the middle of the night, so we weren't really supposed to be there. And they have these old athletic fields. This is St. Andrew's School, I could say that. Cool. But um, they have these old, vast 
you know, open, like nice, almost like a golf course grass fields that are just like acres and acres. So we used to go out there and I like run around, play like, you know, whatever kids play, like manhunt and stuff like that. And when you were for like 14, 15? Yeah, you know, nine. get into trouble. Yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. run away from the security and stuff. And uh, we were out there and my, my buddies lived right up against the school. So we could always kind of cross over. And we saw some stuff in the sky zipping around. And at first, one of us saw it. Then we was all like, hey, look at that. And it was such a kind of profound experience. We all kind of ran away at the end of that. Uh, you didn't even address it. We stuck it. around to see it. No, we stuck around to see it. And then when it became, okay. when it was obvious that it was like real, it was very shocking. And we ran back home. Ran back home to my friend's parents who happened to be a conspiracy theorist himself, yeah, <laughs> believe it or not. So and, it's, it's paradigm <clears throat> shifting. So, mm -hmm. so what happened? He, he just basically gave us, gave us the, uh, you know. Was he the, saying like, yo, they're going to say Werner Von Braun was saying they're coming? Like what was No, <laughs> it was, I was blessed to have like a very, mm -hmm. yeah, he gave me the 101 on kind of that stuff, yeah. He was like, a real guide, yeah. The uh, hidden history of the space programs and, you know, the hidden hand behind a lot of that stuff, so. Interesting. I got a good early dose of like, um, you know, top-notch quality like conspiracy theory uh you know a seed planted i guess you could say amazing but, wow so okay so then w did you see him again <laughs> like well or, then me and a couple of those same friends did go out again a little a couple of years later once we heard about people like steven greer and stuff cool and we did try and do like those stupid little app things where like you call down the aliens and oh did you yeah i've heard of that and i think we had a couple like oh what was that what was, but nothing ever like mm -hmm. you know that you're talking about people profound. yeah there's people who follow who follow stephen greer he kind of popularized this where <laughs> yeah. they come together and they call in the he aliens. is a reptilian stephen greer is he i think he is wow. <laughs> i know some. Yeah. <laughs> wow yeah. i'm not i don't i don't disbelieve that at all it looks like, like one yeah <laughs> <laughs> him and bob lazar they yeah both bro. Look like aliens. i think about like they so. yeah like i don't know i don't know it's fishy for sure <laughs> <laughs> it's it's more but by the yeah so they call in the aliens and he has all these documentaries you can look it up mm -hmm. what so you think he's a reptilian <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think he's for a real? faker too really a it's bit, like yeah. misinformation person yeah yeah it's interesting the I, I believe in a lot of that. Like there's people out there who are like truthers or whatever trying to get out information. Mm -hmm. It could be part of the, C, you know, you know, three letter agencies. I don't want to talk too much about that stuff, but it's, tr <laughs> it's, it's, tr it's true, bro. So, yep. wow, bro. You've gone like really far down this stuff and I want to like meet people where they're at too, you know? Cause like. I could tell you there's in Miami. This goes hand in hand with the whole, you know, giant alien stuff story around New Year's. There was actually a school called Crestview Elementary School near Opalaca, Florida. I think it's Miami Gardens today. And this school had like one of the largest UFO sightings ever in American history, recorded, well recorded. What? It was in Opalaca. Yeah, it was like 300 kids teachers, adults, who all saw, like, shocking things in the skies. But, but it was large craft, they say. And this was, like, right in the middle of, you know, Cold War secrecy, and it could have been anything. Yeah, but it's exactly. one of the most well-documented. It was, like, 50 years ago or whatever. Mm, it's in 1967. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And then a lot of people would congregate on kind of, like, significant anniversaries after that, or significant dates and try and see stuff there, and they would. So then, like, a group of 30 saw something. Yeah, interesting. Dude, so, so, yeah, and it always happens, in, a lot of the sightings happen in Florida. Mm -hmm. Like, on the beach <clears throat> in Florida, and by the way, that's where I saw it. Everyone's looking at the sunsets. Yeah, right, they're looking They're nicest up. here. They're not looking at their TV screens. There's or... less mountains. Mm, more space better skies, sky, yeah. yeah. But also, like, uh, the space station's right there. Kind of, yeah, mm -hmm. but by the way, I just want a disclaimer. Like we're talking about, 
would you and would you agree it's kind of a question would you agree that we don't know what they are but it's interesting it's mm-hmm. interesting because people are seeing them these kids you saw them i saw them mm-hmm. but we don't know what they are right i don't think they're aliens i'm not an alien guy yeah it's see that's the thing like people jump to con- so what do you think they are that's the question i mean you know H- you know high level uh, beings you know what occam's <laughs> razor is right yes like the simplest explanation can you explain it for the audience so everyone knows? It's basically, you know, like a, a theory or declaration, really, that the most sim- simple explanation is often the truest and, and most likely. So, yeah, the most likely explanation for me is that it's something the government is doing already, that they're not, you know, it's not going out to the public. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of theories. Number one, you know, aliens... If they're telling their stuff from elsewhere, it devalues here. <clears throat> we have problems here. Mm. You know, they want us thinking out in Mars and all this stuff, and so it's nonsense. About, so you know. it's, dude, thanks for saying that. So what? So it's just like Hollywood, project, it is Hollywood. projections, right? Is that mm-hmm. so? Let's break that right for people right now. <laughs> if you were willing to take that, because that's that's deep. People like their space. People like all that stuff. Space is fake. <laughs> space is fake. Uh, Dude, this is great. Guys, oh my goodness. People are going to get mad at us. You've been there. Yeah, right? (laughs) Been to space? No, like, (laughs) you've been there where people just get mad at you for saying that, though, right? No. (laughs) Not really. So, okay, so the alien, it's not like aliens from another planet. It's more of like a higher, it's like intelligence. I think it's humans just messing around. Like government. With stuff they stole from the Nazis or. Or something like that. Right. Hidden space program. and That know. we don't know about. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, man. They're flying around up there. But it could also be like... Because those things move differently. Yeah, it's like... T- it's well, they zip. Okay. You is know... It, uh, is it because they're using the ether? And, and I Yeah. Something, something like that. It's not my expertise at all, you know. But there yeah. was stuff around World War II that was flying a lot differently. You know, the, the jet engine came up out of nowhere. Mm. It seems like we've been stuck on that paradigm ever since. Everything, you know? ha- after World War II, it kind of, it was like kind of everything happened after that, like antibiotics, all this. World War II was, mm-hmm. what do you think about that? It's so interesting. Well, it's the, like history stopped there, so almost. You had the Great Depression, yeah. which kind of sunk everyone into this urban dependency. Uh, living off the city centers, really. From the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. A shift towards like uh, welfare, statism, God. things like that. That's what was going Sucking on. Sucking off the government. Because they didn't have any money. Mm-hmm. And from getting what? away from farming. From That's what? the huge one. Ding, ding, people, ding. Kids were, people were selling their kids, you know. <laughs> yeah. Dude, 1929. Live... What? Yeah. People forgot how to grow cabbage and just started living off the government. Wow, I'm gen- I'm generalizing. No, here, no, no, no. I appreciate you framing it like that because that's interesting. Like we people don't realize how good we have it with Publix and whatever else. Mm-hmm. This is this is good stuff, guys. So, okay, so the depression kicked us <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? There were all these like new like you all these agencies that started after that organizations. And stuff. Right. You could list all the. the what do you think that is? You know. Believe it or not, it does go back to Florida a little bit. You have the Federal Reserve kicking in, you know. A lot of people talk about this stuff. On but, 19, uh, in 1913, right? It was started. The, yeah, the 1912, Federal... 1913. How did it start, though, in Florida? It was... Well, there's a little island called Jekyll Island. That's in That's, Florida? Well, it's on the border of Florida and Georgia. That's right. Technically, it's Georgia. But, you know, back 500 years, that was Florida. The people who... Ancient people who lived there, another race of giants, tall people, were the Tamukua. And the Tamukua ranged from basically the top of Tampa Bay all the way to Jekyll Island. And Jekyll Island might have been one of their like capital cities. And these people were at least six and a half feet tall, ranging up to nine feet tall. The Tamukua. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, up in Jekyll Island. Yep. And that's where the Federal Reserve kicked off. Yeah. And so Tim Bentz 
gave an interview, I think like 10 years ago or so, where he basically broke down how there's a blood sacrifice altar that the Tamukua used to use, and they were a lot different than your average Native American tribe, right? How so? Well, they were very, very tall, very muscular, and they had what a lot of people were considering Canaanite practices. So they would sacrifice the firstborn. A lot of times the firstborn male would be sacrificed, like on an altar. It's like stuff you see in these movies, in Apocalypto. Oh, like, yeah. Whoa. A lot of stuff you see. Remember the uh, Apocalypto when they're uh, uh -huh. making them run from the bow and arrows? Yeah. And they're throwing addle addles at them. Yeah. It was like fun and games. That's taken straight from a, from a, from a narrative that was recorded in Florida which was Juan Ortiz. So Juan Ortiz was a Spaniard in like 15, late 1520s, 28 around there, who got cast away. Or not cast away, he got lured on shore by a group of natives okay. who had been wronged years earlier. These were tall people too, either the Tocobaga, I think. Wronged by white people. Well, uh, other people. Maybe the Spanish. Other people, yeah. They look, Spanish look like you, mister. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I got that olive yeah. skin. Yeah. The conquistadors. He's the conquistador. Over so wait, wait, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> wait, we're getting sidetracked, dude. Juan Ortiz, bro. Juan Ortiz, what happened to him? Um, Juan Ortiz went went on, you know, to the coast. He got lured over by the natives, right? And, they, and these were the P Temucua. They no, they, these were Tocobaga. So they were they were closely related to the Tamuku. I know it's they're close. It's close. Okay. But um he got lured on shore because they had been wronged by the Spanish who came before the Narvaez expedition. And they basically Narvaez expedition went missing, right? They actually looped around Gulf of Mexico and made it to Mexico. Only like three dudes, like eight people max made it, survived out of like a couple hundred. So, but when they went through Florida, they messed with the Tocobaga. And they actually set <clears throat> set some of their people on fire and fed the chief's mom. <laughs> mom, this is terrible. Fed her to the dogs <laughs> in, front her, in front of her. Your laughing's making me laugh. Wait, all right, so <laughs> she fed them to the mom. They fed. <laughs> this, it was terrible, and they cut this chief's nose off. So they were pissed at the Spanish. The Spanish came back, yeah, and they were looking for the expedition that went missing. And the natives were like, "Well, screw you guys," but they were they were pretending like, "Hey, come on, come to shore. You know, we're gonna help you find your friends." Yeah. So they sent a, so they sent four guys to shore. The Indians sent four um, as collateral back to the ship. Four men, right? Four Indians to sit on the ship, and then four dudes went on to the mm. shore. As soon as the Spaniards made it onto the shore, the Indians jumped into the water <clears throat> and they grabbed the Spaniards. So a couple of those guys, they made run. They made them run from the arrows like the uh, Apocalypto game. That's very well recorded. And then Juan Ortiz got spared by... Got it. <clears throat> by um, a princess, the daughter of the chief who was actually a princess. This is the real Pocahontas, by the way. Pocahontas is fake. Juan Ortiz, wait, 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 wait. Pocahontas is a fiction from po Disney. Pocahontas was, was real. Her name wasn't Pocahontas. That was a nickname. But that Virginia woman, she's not the real Pocahontas. That story was plagiarized by John Smith. John uh, Smith, Agent Smith, okay. The, the name that's most associated with with uh, anonymity <laughs> and the manufacturing of identities, John Smith. John Smith. He's the guy that we we get all these stories from about early colonial America, Bro. and the the powers that be would like you to believe that America is a solely English undertaking. That's uh, the whole narrative. Undertaken. Oh, you asking? That's him? what I'm. Getting. No, no, no. Who's the most famous Native American? Pocahontas. You know. Right. I've done it. I've not taken that Not the Tocobaga. Not the. So that's Dude, in Florida. Every, the, every second that goes on, I have like 10 more questions where we can go with it. But you're just slowly, I'm just going to let you go because you're unveiling this. 
there's a poke. So John Smith, go on about that. That's so crazy. So John Smith was a fraud. This is true. This is a fact. It's not my opinion. Anyone can look it up for themselves. <laughs> so where, who, when was, when was he a, around? So he was, you know, he came to Jamestown around like 1607, I think. And he was a prisoner when he showed up to Jamestown. Interesting. It was by, <clears throat> by default that he had the most qualifications being a previously a mercenary that he knew how to like shovel and essentially get people under order. So he was made <clears throat> kind of like the de facto uh, leader. Because shortly he was after. a good slave runner type thing? Yeah, he, he essentially was the only guy with like had the most testosterone around and right. was telling everyone what to do. Right. And at that time they needed that. It doesn't change the fact that he was a rotten individual and he would go on to lie about all, you know, he'd glorify his own doings there. And there's a guy who, one of his, you know, closest um, companions during that time would, would write all this, exposed him very shortly after, who was there, lived through everything, lived through worse than John Smith. Do you know why the English would like to lie about Jamestown? Yeah. Um, I have, a, I have a cruel sense of humor, so, you know. <laughs> but uh, they were cannibals in Jamestown. Wow. So this is no glorious, you Sweet. know, story. Wow. Um, they don't show the cannibals in Pocahontas. Right. They don't show, you know, all the, not to harp on, like, left-wing talking points or anything, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't show, like, the subjugation, the, the just terrible. Sure. And a lot of R word. Imperialism, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. and the, of course. Not to say the Spanish didn't do a lot of that, too. But the story is a lot more noble in a lot of these stories. The or the original stories are way more noble in Spain. Juan Ortiz, which is the Spanish equivalent of John Smith. Mm. Juan Ortiz, right? It's just like vanilla, yeah, like yeah, yeah. textbook, you know, auto-generated almost. Juan Ortiz, the real John Smith, was taken ashore in Florida, right? And then actually rescued by a real princess. Princess Eulalie. When he was released from these people. Well, she saved him from death once. Right. He was about to get apocalyptoed. It was <laughs> right? out of the Mel Gibson movie. Straight actually. out of it. Wow. They were arrowing his friends in a ball court. Wow. Filling them full of arrows. And then he survived, got saved once by, by a group of the chief's wife and a couple daughters. Then later on, they got pissed off at him again, and they were going to roast him, cook him alive on a barbecue, on a barbecue. <laughs> on a barbecue. So Wait, I'm gonna... sorry. I'm, like, I'm still laughing. You called me a conquistador earlier. <laughs> but go on, go on. So Juan Ortiz. Juan Ortiz. They were going to barbecue him. They were going to barbecue him alive. That word comes from Florida, barbecue. Barbacoa. You ever yeah, ordered yeah, barbacoa? Yeah. Pork. Yeah. That's what they do on a fire. They right. so that process of drying and smoking something over flame, yeah, or a, a low flame, a lot of smoke that comes from Florida. Yeah. And there's a couple different possible origins, but it was in practice right. in Florida under right. that name, barbecue. They were probably doing it in not many other places, but yeah, so. this is so interesting, dude. We always bring it back to Florida, which I love, mm -hmm. it's where we are, it's kind of incredible. And we, we can also grow all these things. And you're probably aware of this, too, from being here. So you grew up here. Mm -hmm. Coca it's, it's, it's like Eden almost. So I want to oh, yeah. get into that, but like also talk more about this history because it's so interesting. Mm -hmm. the, basically, you're talking about how people were here for much longer than we, we think. Mm -hmm. And the history is way different. Well, just the general misconception is that the, the United States, America, was born in Virginia. The, the process is the that, whole misconception of yeah. that people needed to understand. That's what you're saying. The process yeah. is that happened around like our revolution at the hands of the English, right? Um, that could be equated more to like a puberty than a birth of our nation because the first, the oldest European settlement of North America was in the mainland. America was Florida. That's right. So St. It was Augustine, right? St. Augustine. There might have been a little earlier attempted settlement in near Pensacola or Apalachicola by the Huguenots. Which is close to Jekyll Island, by the way. But I don't want to see the mm -hmm. St. Augustine. And then 
there is uh, basically. Um, so why don't they teach that in our textbooks? That St. They, Augustine, we were in St. Augustine, Juan Ortiz. Mm -hmm. Like, why are they trying to? Yeah, there's a lot of them. things they don't teach. You yeah. know, Pocahontas, the real Pocahontas was from uh, Florida, as I said. The, the John Smith might have been not even been, been a real person. <laughs> Largely faked his life story, truly. But then you have the first Thanksgiving in Florida. What? Like three of them. Really? Actual Thanksgivings before the English were ever in in Virginia, North Carolina, Massachusetts, any of that. So, uh, so the that English all gets, basically we just like, hey, by the way, this is we're the ones who found mm -hmm. all this. Well, we're a, the saviors. It's the same thing any empire would do if you're taking over, you know, a big piece of land. What a trip. And, and your people had already been cannibalizing each other right. in Virginia. We're not going to be talking about that. <laughs> and by the way, have you been to Texas? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I went to, I uh, worked on farms there and they were talking, the people there, the old timers there, they'd be like, dude, the Native Americans, you'd go down the river, they would eat you. Mm -hmm. like, that was like a con. There was like some of them, <laughs> not not to you know, yeah. not to generalize or anything, but there was tribes in Florida. I just think that were cannibals. Yeah, I laugh because it's just like so like out of this world. Like we live in a world where like, you know, we don't understand our history. You can make light of it. Certainly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. You were cracking me up in your recent <laughs> video, dude. The dragons of Florida. Yeah, the alligators. We can get into that too. Sure. All right, what are we? In, I'm learning so much. This is great, man. The to, the Tamu, the Tamukua people. Mm -hmm. is that, those the, were the people. Those ones were around Jekyll Island, down to Tampa Bay. Right. So north. Where, was, where were the Topo, Tocobaga that found Juan Ortiz? Tampa Bay. The Spanish landed around Tampa Bay. The Tampa first Bay. wedding between a European and native was likely b between one of them if not the Calusa to the south of them. So all these firsts happened in, you know, the first native, the first European man born here, the first... It was here. Um, in Florida, yeah. In the Florida. first baptism, you know, <clears throat> native baptism, the first... So when you went to go look into all this stuff, because, by the way, you could go find Connor now in Old World Florida. Mm -hmm. That's where people find you, right, on mm -hmm. YouTube. And you, when you went to go research all this stuff and make documentaries and put out your work, uh, you found out all this stuff that Florida's the epicenter of all this stuff. It's Florida seems to be the epicenter of a lot of things, right? Dude, Disney. By the way, Disney, Orlando, guys. Mm -hmm. NASA, big presence here, right? Disney. You were just talking about Pocahontas. That's Disney. Yes. All this. Thank dude, you. Iron Iron Republic. Do you mm -hmm. know about that? Yeah. Other worlds and stuff like that. Do you want to exact? Do you want to get into that because? We talked about space. If you want to get into space, yeah, gonna... yeah exactly. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, so it's so much, so much happened in Florida, man. Like, yeah, what do you think? What do you think about like the Iron Mount? The, <laughs> the Iron Mountain. There is an Iron Mountain exactly. in Florida. It, seriously, that's almost the dead center of Florida. There's it's an Iron the, Mountain in Florida. One of the tallest points. It has Bach Tower on top of it. Have you been there? Mm-hmm. It's largely made of like iron, like ochre or like reddish like metallic clay deposits interesting that's right people go up there to get clay and there's a thing there called spook hill where spook your hill. hit car will alle allegedly roll uphill and it looks like it's getting pushed from behind your car yeah and people put like powder on their bumpers and little handprints appear do you think it was naturally there or do you think someone put it there i haven't done that but people can look it up if they want to see Spook Hill near Bach so Tower. So interesting, man. And yeah, because isn't there supposed to be, because now we're getting into it, but we're going to, isn't there supposed to be an Iron Mountain in the center of kind of our realm, whatever mm -hmm. this is? Like a metallic mountain. A metallic mountain. Right, yeah, like a magnetic axis. That's why North points, the compass points there mm -hmm. to North. Anyone who wants to know what we're living on and looking at, go look up Finnish mythology mm -hmm. on Wikipedia. And there's an, it, an axis. It shows you there's an axis at the North Pole. Finnish mythology. Yeah. That's the realm we live on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it like now 
we're gonna get like people are gonna get really mad is it the is it the flat earth like what do you think that is because it's obviously not a globe it's not what they're telling us Mm -hmm. let's come to we agree on that right so I'm, i'm a christian yeah cool there's no space in the bible there's no none of this there's there's no up or down like that okay right yeah now when people say flat earth they think mm. of a sheet of paper floating in space that's ridiculous right for sure anything floating space, in space space doesn't exist we already came to that conclusion we are the center of it all wow. there's no greater gift you can tell someone than that it's so true connor and by the way connor guys people are going to be like well you just want to be important you're the center of everything what do you what do you think about that Whatever. It is speci- it is Tell special. me how special you feel thinking you're a carnivorous monkey on a rock in the middle yeah. of nowhere by accident for no reason. Mm-hmm. You're just spinning around for, sure. for a couple million years, yeah. and the and if you're lucky, the sun won't go out in your lifetime. Yeah, right. And you're the accident of some and, algae that yeah. became a monkey. And, and by the way, <laughs> hey monkey, there's falling rocks in the sky and you could be dead at mm-hmm. any point. These are the same people who told us <laughs> what medicine we should have been taking mm-hmm. the last couple of years and wow. and things like that. And Guys, let that hit home. Yeah, the same people. That's facts. <laughs> Tell them, man. There's any way you could look at this. You could crit- critique the science, but I like to stand on the the religious, you know, what the Bible says. Yeah, I didn't know that. You are, you are Christian and you're that's where you stand with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of what is in there is is intri- it's like it's pretty pretty on point. The giants are in there. The sure, Nef- they are. The Nephilim. The giants are in there. Yeah, I mean, it's so. This is so good, and I mean, I think anyone who have you ever done mushrooms, like psilocybin mushrooms? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, anyone who's done a, any of that can come to the conclusion that this isn't just. We're not just some random. There's a mm-hmm. lot more going on in this existence, right? Well, the the Bible's a lot more interesting than people think. Yeah, talk totally. about mushrooms. You know, uh, there's a guy named Terence McKenna, who I'm not totally on board with, but really interesting guy. Yeah, you know, good researcher, very smart man, very well read, and <clears throat> he basically came up with a theory that has been mislabeled as the stoned ape theory. And you can see direct parallels in Genesis. You look at Genesis, and I challenge anyone to read the book of Genesis with a strictly literal interpretation. And I'm all about the astro-theological and, and reading more into the Bible than is there. You can do that. It's, it's a very capable document. But hold a strictly literal criteria to Genesis, and you'll come away with one of the most transcendental, you know, psychedelic texts that, that exists is wow, the yeah. story of how man and woman came to be. Maybe not originally, but in some iteration, some creation, some type of genesis, a start, you see a clear mention of an entheogen, this forbidden fruit. You know, now... Interesting. Terence was a little heavy on the evolution. He believed that we really came from monkeys into humans or apes into humans. I don't believe that one bit. Mm. That was the stone ape theory. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the shift... That was in Genesis, by the way. You're talking about Adam and Eve, Mm -hmm. right? The shift from Homo erectus to Cro-Magnon 100,000, maybe a couple hundred thousand years ago was facilitated by the inclusion of psilocybin mushrooms into the human diet. And to think that there's any one thing, fruit, by the way, a mushroom is called a fruit, a fruit body. Yeah, that's right. It's not, might not be a vegetable like people think. It's the fruiting part of the fungus. Exactly. It's the sexual reproductive, you know. Yeah, member. Part. (laughs) That's what fruit is. Yes. God says to be fruitful. So right there, fruit does not mean a fruit that comes down like an apple. The word apple is never used in Genesis. The word fruit is, God says, be fruitful. He's clearly referring to the sexual reproductive part of an organism, which for, the mushroom for sure. is. For sure. Mushroom is qualified as a fruit by every definition. So That's so interesting. The word forbidden is never used. So when I use forbidden fruit, don't, don't think I'm quoting the Bible. But when they say, there was a fruit in, in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that humans were not allowed to eat. 
one could see how there's very, one could see how at that stage man was a vegetarian. Man was, if not vegan, fruitarian clearly in the Bible. Before there were cannibalism any, and all that stuff. Any Christian has to come to terms with this. You think so? Man was created as a vegetarian. You think vegan. the Bible tells us that we're supposed to, we were living like that at that time? Any serious biblical scholar really? will concur, cool. will tell you that man was created as a vegan fruitarian solely. Have you met Paul Nissen? I don't know. I got to introduce you to him. He's a way into, he's a, Jew, he's a Jewish background, into Jesus now, Christian knows the whole bible yeah and uh he is all raw all raw plants mm -hmm. uh excuse me all raw diet so you you believe that really we were instructed to keep and tend the garden of eden which very well may be florida we can get into that yeah. i'd love to dude that's but, such a cool theory yeah i would and, and uh, by the way the psilocybin mushrooms are everywhere here in the, yes, right here i can I'll tell you how that works into some of my theories. It's it's a key element. Interesting. So, okay. you know, if man was just a on par with an ape somewhat, or pre-human, something like that, if mankind ever did get an upgrade, and like I'm saying, I'm not subscribing to one of these theories wholly, but sure. my interpretation of the Bible points to if there were any forbidden fruit, that did grow in the midst of a garden. One could see how mushrooms would be cause for a couple different um, warnings from whoever's, you know, the rules of that garden. Mushrooms, they can be dangerous. They're largely poisonous. So mushrooms as a whole may have had a warning placed on them in this some type of early, you know, human setting. And, you know, they grow out of poop. That's another reason why, you know, stay away. It's not the cleanest of foods when not taken with care. <clears throat> so there's many reasons. Also, they're largely like an animal. You know, mushrooms display a lot of animal qualities. They're not wholly a vegetable. Yeah, that's right. They're not wholly a fungus in, in a lot of the way people think. They display a lot more human, if not animal, what? capabilities. Really? Yeah. What do you mean by that? There. Number one, you'll, any meat eater will tell you, a lot of meat eaters, I have a friend who's very carnivorous, who doesn't eat any vegetables. Okay. Mushrooms is one of the only things he'll eat because mm -hmm. it's comparable to flesh. So For real, it is. It There's is. a lot of alternative. Lion's mane, it's even a, the regular ones, you know. Yes. So there's a lot, a lot of things. We can get into that, but I want to kind of focus in on the psychedelic element is one could see how that might have been a tabooed food choice and had limitations placed on it originally. Now, should one choose to break those limitations, break the rules, and take one and get lucky, there would be massive benefits, rewards, right? So Terence McKenna talked about how there's all these benefits that are just coming out now with people like Paul Stamets and all this stuff. And I'm not a huge, huge mushroom guy. Yeah, yeah. But it's deep. a strict literal interpretation of Genesis demands a serious consideration of what is this fruit that changes, alters man's consciousness. Because what does it tell us in Genesis? It says, their eyes were opened and they knew they were naked. Mm. When you take psychedelic mushrooms, all metaphor aside, your eyes, you know, get opened. Your pupils, well, yeah. what's they called? You know, they expand. They expand. A lot. Yeah, dilate. Dilate. Yes. So your eyes, literally and metaphorically, are opened. Are open. How many fruits can do that to you? So this is definitely a fruit that's tabooed even today. And it was back then. It's my greatest choice for a literal, true, historical for so, forbidden fruit. So interesting. Here in Florida, we have the psilocybin, I think they call it tampanensis or tampiensis, something like that. It's Tampa's very own magic mushroom. And this one doesn't grow out of poop, or at least it, it's not restricted to that. Uh, uh -huh. It comes about as a result of forest fires. Interesting. So somewhat of like a phoenix mushroom. Okay. comes after these pine fires 
And this one was actually like cloned or, you know, copied, you know, people harvested it from the wild and kind of just set to reproducing it privately for the drug market. Mm. And some of America's most favored magic mushrooms come from this Tampa Bay. Really? What type, what type is it? Well, it's nicknamed the Philosopher's Stone. Okay. So Cool, I'll check it out. Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, 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 we'll look it up. And I think they found it in like Damn. 77, 1970s, and then they lost it. Okay. It was lost. People didn't find it for a long, long time until kind of recently. Interesting. That might have been the one yeah. that Adam and Eve Dude, took a bite of. What are they talking about when they say fruit? You know, it could be that. Mm-hmm. So cool. So well, there's a lot. Of, I can talk one more interpretation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was this PG thirteen? Yeah, yeah. Is sex because God says to be fruitful. Mm-hmm. So clear. The first meaning of fruit in the Bible is fruit, like be fruitful, reproductive by mm-hmm. nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The secondary definition of that is then fruit from a tree. Yeah. So got it. Man and woman, man, whoever, you know, serpent is another kind of sexual imagery. Um, there might have been a mishap in that area that yeah. was shameful enough to forever stain the subconscious of mankind. Mm, interesting. And we might still be suffering from from similar Yeah. You know. What a deep mishaps. What a deep story. Wow. So why do so many people reject it? It's, it's, it's a, it demands accountability. People would like to live in a free, karmically neutral wow. life where it just nothing matters. There's no father. Yeah, man. That they'll, that's another thing. People get triggered when you... It's all, you know, this feminist, mm. uh, you know, perception of, of nature, which has no place that, we you know, every culture there's ever been. So explain yourself on that, like, yeah, so for people who are just like, and just what do you mean by that exactly? It you hasn't. Pull, every culture, people don't like it, but you always hear people saying sky daddy, like this, this anti-Christian, you know, slur. Oh, okay. Is, What's that? that? I don't know. What that, 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 you know, people are upset over the fact that there's a male entity behind a lot of the decision making in, in some of these Abrahamic faiths. Yes. And that you can make the it's argument. Patriarchal, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what they're saying. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can make the argument that the role of the female has been, um, you know, minimized. Right. And Important role. Well. The feminine. Yes. That's what you're referring to, exactly. right? Okay. Now, yeah. I would rectify this as saying that any culture there's ever been, ancient culture, tradition, you know. Yeah, yeah. Religion, group of mythologies, they point up to the sky and they say, he. Him, masculine, and the ground father. Is, the ground is her. Exactly. Sorry. To then every that. culture, the same cultures will tell you. They'll point down and say, "Mother, Earth." So there's a tierra, cause. Tierra, tierra is mother, yes, feminine, exactly. stars. It's madre, material, mother, mud, wow. made of mud. Wow. Everything down there is material. Terra is even the end of Madeira. You know, mother. It's like all it's, these words. It's just, and we are of. Mm-hmm. creation so people don't people have have lost you know have not come to terms with the fact that there's a cause then an effect astrology is one of you know the great salves to this issue mm, let's get into this it, there's the causal realm up there the heavens which is largely masculine by nature fire and air lights up in the sky then down here is clearly a feminine, effectual realm that receives the influence of the stars. Water and earth. This is not my opinion. This is laid out by the Bible. It's laid out by every grand tradition there's ever been, religious, monotheistic or not. Well, how, where'd, you, where, where'd you learn about all this uh, astrology, right? Because it's, it's different from astronomy, which mm-hmm. is what we learn in schools, right? Well, yeah, astronomy is a very shallow science the naming of things astronomy the naming of bodies up there Mm. which already which very recent you know activity the naming of those things in the sense that we know whereas astrology is the most ancient science known to man it's the most ancient tradition the fountain the cause of every religion there's ever been 
whether people like it or not. It's the most valued science and approach to natural living that all of the world religions cling to and profess, you know, right down to the Bible tells you. So God created the zodiac. It's not a creation of man. It's not a creation of the devil. It's not a creation of Lucifer or any false teachings. That's purely superstition. Um, it's laid out by the Bible, clearly in Genesis. Really? Oh yeah. God says, "Let there be. Let them be for signs and for seasons." Wow. Meaning the signs are more important than the seasons. Signs in the sky, but the seasons are important. Yeah, but that's. If, if I can only narrow down my understanding of, of nature into four areas, uh -huh. I'm a little limited. Twelve spokes to that wheel give me a little bit more pinpoint accuracy in understanding the wow. times. Because why would you break down your year into four sectors? Big time. And then just leave it at winter or of fall. Course. You're just going to have quarterly meeting. Mm -hmm. You need the monthlies. Wait, exactly. Yeah, so that's where mo months come into play, right? Now, there's a big thing I'd like to clear up. People say we're in the Gregorian calendar. Oh, our time is so wrong. We're lost. Yeah. We're so out of sync. We'll never get back. This is folly. Really? Why? How? This Because there's one solar zodiac. There's one spring equinox. You can't, you can't miss that. You can't miss the solstices. Right. The you're saying they're saying we're like out of whack because they yeah. put us into some count. Right. Mm -hmm. they're we're pr pretty pr on the money. Uh, 2,000 <laughs> years into the to an age that's about to end, about to start another 2,000 years. We're You're pretty on the money. Really? With our astrological, where we're at? Our calendar is within, uh, I think, 30 seconds of the ancient Egyptian calendar. Got you. So, so we're on the money. People, other people have chosen <laughs> different, different bodies in the sky and chosen them as the principal you know, timekeeping body, like you have lunar calendars. Now this whole month thing, people say, oh, there's supposed to be 13 months. There's only one issue with our, with our year and calendar. It's that the word month is applied to a 30 day segment of the solar year. That's kind of, that's a misnomer. Month means month. Like one out of 10 is a 10th. So one month is one lunar cycle out of a lunar year. Exactly. Month. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a moon. I've heard that before, yeah. That's why you have Monday, it's moon day. All the days of the week come from astrology. People say, I don't believe in astrology. Yes, they do. <laughs> if they get up on Monday and get off on Friday, <laughs> get off on work on Friday, you're living astrology, whether you like it or not. How are those connected? Sad Saturday, Saturn? Mm -hmm. What's the Return. Sabbath? Wow. <laughs> and Sunday. So, wait, what else, what else? You're good at these, the etymology. Mm -hmm. So... How is it connect? So keep going on onto this, because so we'll just real quick. There should be thirteen months, but twelve solar segments to our calendar, which are going under the wrong name. You could, you know, um, what do you call yeah. months in, in Spanish? Months, uh, me, <laughs> what do I? I'm the conquistador. I should know. <laughs> uh, I think me, me, mesas, mes, no mesa. That's a table. That's a table. <laughs> Oh my God! It's Mrs. been a while. I don't. I haven't been. Whatever. But uh, Jamie, a month, look it up. <laughs> there, there's a better name out there yeah. that can be used for for month. That's the only issue. The uh, thing I would change with our calendar: thirteen lunar cycles in a year. That's thirteen times twenty-eight. Perfect. Three hundred sixty-four day year. Thirteen mm. times twenty-eight. Now, the issue is that we have a solar calendar. The sun is important, more important than the moon, if I may say. <laughs> and yeah, wait, why? Why is it more important? Because we need it more. Yeah. Now they're both did integral. They come, did they come to be at the same time? Uh, yeah. Those things are as old as time can be. The moon is not a piece of rock from, from the earth. Anyone who's, who's telling you that is lying yeah. through their teeth. How could they ever prove that? But some people say I've had I've talked to some interesting people, dude. That's why I gotta ask. NASA's I've, I've given all... people moon rocks that were proven to be frauds later. Exactly. Dude, it's such it's... a joke. By the yeah, I agree with all it's all it's all lies from NASA. But my question is peop, some people say we've been there. We haven't been there. No way. We haven't gone we're not no going way. to Mars. So we're not going to Mars? No. We're no. You can't go to Mars. It's not it's there's no it's not <laughs> real. That is pure fantasy. 
So Pure I just always like to be get to like write to like then why what are we all doing with SpaceX and all these things? What it's a waste think? of money. They knew they figured that out. Uh, NASA is one of the most profitable entities to have ever existed. They make all this money. I found that out. They make like eighty million a day or something, mm-hmm. sixty million. The only thing I've what ever seen the only thing I've ever seen out of NASA is like astronaut food that they hand out in classrooms. Slave what else food, are they doing? Army food. <laughs> Slave food. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to figure it out too, guys. Like that's why this is it's good to have this open conversation. You know, the NASA what, it is. Like, what are they doing? NASA means deception in Hebrew. It means to lie, to deceive. There are symbols the serpent's tongue. Wow. Yeah, every, isn't that every red? man that's ever been to the moon has been a Freemason. The red symbol is the serpent's tongue, you're saying. The, yes, wow. the red, I think vector they call it. Dude. It's a serpent's tongue. Every space agent agency around the world has a serpent's tongue on their logo. Right. Space may be the so, final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. Yep. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, so NASA's all lies. What did they? Why did they start it? Werner von Braun started it, right? They're good at building rockets. They build good rockets and good missiles and things like that. And so number one, if you if we're just going average Joe interpretation, I would say yeah. there's a space race. There was a weapons race, a nuclear arms race. There's to own the space. Between the West and the East, you the know. The space we're in. Interesting. That's what these crafts are. Well, about it's stuff, the man. Soviets and you know, the Americans and NATO yeah. uh, vying for power. And in the minds of the people, in the minds of the people, power for the world. And back then, people were very gullible, you know. It was like telling someone thousands of years ago, oh, the gods are are up there in the heavens, you know, doing all the fighting and all this stuff. And it's the same. Wow. So just real quick, you think older people are typically wiser? Just a little <laughs> bit? No, not a trick question, right? Um, yeah. So the, the oldest person there's ever been mm-hmm. in America recorded, his name is Charlie Smith. He was about 137 Wow. Around there when he died. Oh my goodness! Minimum verifiable age, he was 105. So 100, you know, people have brought into question, oh, was he actually that old? But nonetheless, he was when he was alive. He was the richest. Sorry, not richest. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the richest. Dude. But he was the uh-huh. oldest man in American history recorded, right? Yeah. And Florida recognized him as such. They were paying him. They were paying him social security, reflecting that. And he was invited to the Apollo launch, one of the later ones. Well, I think the last one, actually. Uh, one of the only ones that ever had a malfunction. And I think it was the only nighttime launch. But they invited him. To be in the spaceship? <laughs> no, no. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> no. Okay, okay. 137. Okay. Sorry, sorry. They invited him to get, to basically commentate as the oldest person alive on the earth, they invited him to witness what humanity is doing in your lifetime. Then he shows up, and they launch the rocket, and they ask him, what do you think? And he goes, they ain't going to no moon. Ain't no man can, can't land on no moon. <laughs> he said that. Oh, yeah, he said that. Yeah. He had I've been heard born old, yeah. before the indoctrination. <sighs> Yeah, exactly before the indoctrination. Yeah. We The first thing we're taught when we're kids, guys, is space. Mm-hmm. And like where the planets are. And all. What do the, teach, do what teach do the teachers us have us? That, what do the teachers dude, have on their desk? The remember. globe and the apple. So the globe. Whoa. And then the reminder of man's original sin. Wow. What a trip. <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> apple. You ever seen a teacher? They're not eating any apples. Yeah. That's Trust me. <laughs> Wait, so. that's so interesting. Mm-hmm. The I'm I wanna I wanna go. What, what were we just getting at? We're blowing. We're blowing everyone. Not the the old guy, the hundred thirty seven year old. Yeah, Charlie Smith. Charlie Smith. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's been. I've seen videos of older people. They were like, oh, we learned about the flat Earth, like you know, different mm-hmm. maps. You know, not necessarily that model that everyone's. We were talking. So it's interesting. Like, where did it happen? Like, was it those Rockefeller? books that literally mm-hmm. he issued all our books we learned from right mm-hmm. people used to live a lot older in general he, uh charlie smith was an orange picker he picked oranges for almost 100 years 
He was in, in Florida. Florida. Amazing. And that largely contributed to his longevity. Now, it was only after he criticized the moon landing that he was stripped of his titles and people started questioning and denying his claims to his age. Whereas the state of Florida was paying him, reflecting his, his true age, very old age, yeah. social security. So we better watch out, dude. People committed to this narrative, bro. People committed. Well, he What's lived. What's the deal? <laughs> people used to live a long time. People lived a lot longer, like the Bible says. You're saying yes, because we lived with the land, like mm -hmm. in the flow of the seasons and eating right. Well, you said the Rockefeller system. Yeah. You know, most all pharmaceuticals today are petroleum based, like the pills themselves, the white, like blank, you know. Petroleum based. Petroleum based. Yeah. Where you're eating sludge, yeah. oil. That's what most people are on. Most people are medicated. Most adults. Instead of the in ve America. vegan, most of them are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most middle aged people are. So, yeah, man. Let's spread the good word of fruits and vegetables and turmeric and ginger. Mm hmm. But go on. But go on. I don't want to stop your train of thought. People, people. Yeah, I'm so curious about this. <clears throat> Back to early Florida. Um, some of the first people the Europeans encountered in Florida were the Temucua. The Temucua. Not only were they very tall, seven and a half, eight and a half, cr crazy tall. Their bones used to be on display in Jekyll Island, and in Saint Augustine. They're not there anymore hauled yeah. away yeah possibly likely to the smithsonian right. which they've denied but i've newspaper articles proving oh that many many tall bones were sent to the smithsonian they're all in on it the never Smith seen again those museums that you go to mm -hmm. in new york and stuff yeah what a so trip. people used to live a lot taller and a lot older the tamukua were not only tall they in their own words what they told the spanish or the french who first encountered them were that they were 300 years old, some of them. Wow. And they weren't talking about lo lunar years or, mm. you know, they weren't misrepresenting a year. Mm. 300 years old. And then one of them, the oldest, they said was 350. What's their track? Well, Who they do did, you use? They did not <laughs> eat anything after sundown. Wow. So many of the tribes in Florida did not eat anything from sundown to sunup. Not anything. Many of them didn't drink at all from that's sundown. Ex that's exactly what Paul sundown. talked about, my friend I just brought up, by the way. He said, don't drink when the moon's out. Mm -hmm. you're, supposed now, to, you're supposed to fast. You could say that. Now, Okay. I tend to be a full moon feast, new moon fast type of guy. That's my you know, philosophy. And they had feasts. So this very document that tells us about their ages, they were preparing for a feast. And the French were studying how they did this, how they ate, how they pre prepared their food, because they said, wow, these guys are very old. And the 350-year-old guy, they said, he looked like a bag of bones, but he was still alive and still could walk and talk, 350 years old. But he was like, he was clearly skinny mm -hmm. and looked... So these people, they ate a lot of fruits, a lot of roots around Florida, it's like what someone with the, in a raw diet looks mm -hmm. like, what their let's, body turns into. Let's think about what they didn't have. Yeah. Let's think about what they never had. They never had the cow. They never had the sheep. They never had the pig. Processed oils. Well, those were all introduced by the Spanish, those animals. And processed the oils. Pig, you're right. Mm -hmm. so, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting further away, but you're saying just meat was introduced. They, they would hunt some deer here and there. Deer Some raccoon, yeah. but they were more interested in the in the pelts of those animals and the equipment they had to offer. They rather, didn't eat, than they meat. didn't eat pigs. The now, pigs weren't the here. The pigs were not there yet. DeSoto brought the pigs. Um, the Spaniards, right? The Spaniards brought this. The cow. What a trip. The pig and the cow. Mm -hmm. The goat, the sheep. What an interesting story. So America was like it really was kind of a the the Toco Baga uh -huh. were almost vegetarian, largely. And then forever, forever, they were they were considered some of the tallest and uh, lightest. They were you know very tall and thin, and they were largely vegetarian. They might have had some seafood here and there. Yeah, but they were said to be 
peaceful giants, the Tokobaga of Florida, seven feet tall, and just j- peaceful. Peaceful giants. Mm-hmm. They got screwed over one time when the guy fed that guy's mom to the yeah. dogs, and they were pissed they after were, that. Yeah. But from for after then, they were very peaceful, the Tokobaga. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. wow. So, <clears throat> you know, there's evidence for tall people that goes beyond just stories. And we have these articles of bones being found. So we have the bones being found. We have the original European accounts of the people who first came to the Americas and met the natives. Both of those agree. We talked about those already. Corroborate. Yep, exactly. Then we have the handiworks of the giants themselves, things that may could not have been undertaken by normal-sized people. Beautiful. And some of... Coral Cove, Coral some, Castle or whatever. Well, is, the Coral Castle, one of the, he was a small guy. And oh, I, that wasn't built by John. Excuse me, excuse yeah. me. That was a little guy in Miami who mm-hmm. built that with the... Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you're talking about the anchors that you found. Yeah. Places that used to host ancient maritime empires, naval empires, thousands of years ago you find evidence of those empires in the form of stone anchors. Before, you know, most people think of anchor and they think of an iron, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of T-shaped, you know, J-shaped thing. That's what we use now, yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, an anchor, before that, those are only a couple hundred years, those iron, steel, lead anchors shaped like that. Came from Europe. Mm Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, went along with, you know, those old kind of Nina Pinta, Nina Pinta, Santa Maria type ships. Before that, back in the Roman Empire, um, they were using, you know, rocks with whole holes in them. Mm. That's just what got the job done. You didn't need to overthink it. Big rock. And that's what mm-hmm. you found, right? So all around, it, well, hang on, all around the world, you've got yeah. normal, normal sized anchors. And you'd expect to find them in the Mediterranean, which you do by the thousands, you know, Many, many, many. In the Pacific, where you'd expect to find maritime empires. In the Gulf of Mexico, the coast of Florida, we're not told that there was any great maritime empire. We're told the Native Americans were living in the Stone Age when the Europeans showed up. And they had never traversed any seas or oceans, and no one had ever traversed any oceans or seas prior and came there and met them prior to that. Now, that's not true. That's the way it's framed by our history books. But in Florida, we actually have the largest and what I would say the oldest stone anchors in the world. It's it's evident. Anyone who's been around Tampa Bay has seen them. These are common landscaping features, like people will put them in their lawns really? and kind of make a whole front yard around it. And... <laughs> It'll be in like in up in the land, like mm-hmm. just left there, maybe. Right. So these are Anxious. scattered across the land today. You can still find them in the sea. There are some in the sea. We found some in in the water. Yeah. Underneath. And you know, there's actually been expeditions that have spent millions of dollars out in the ocean, and they're happy when they find one of these anchors. Wow. Millions and millions of dollars. They're happy if they find one because it's the greatest evidence you can hope for. That there was a civilization there, mm-hmm. a Roman now, Empire or something. They don't wow. talk about the ones in Florida because of how large they are. Interesting. Big rocks ask big questions, right? And they have big answers. And this is too much to bite off for the mainstream academia. They'd rather just sweep them under the rug. Even though in many, many Florida um, museums, I can show you, yeah, there are limestone anchors in those museums with holes through them, just primitive anchors. Smaller ones. With early primitive ropes. So we know the span we know the early natives, Florida natives, could weave rope. Mm. We know they could weave nets. Very masterful rope and net makers. There's many plants around here that can capable of building rope. Big time, yeah, yeah. So we can sh- show it to you in the museums. Ancient stone anchors with rope, nets here Everything. in Florida, you, oh yeah, you, yeah. But if you, it's a, if it's any larger than a backpack, that's not an anchor anymore. They they won't it, accept that. They won't admit it because there's no people that they can point to here and say, oh, that belongs to them. It belongs to them. We've so that, seen this before with them, really. So they just sweep it under the rug. Mm-hmm. 
Wow. And they're too large, so they're shockingly large. Do There's they a, look like, yeah, I, I think I've seen a picture on one of your posts or something. Is is it, does it look similar to the smaller ones they find in these yes. museums? For the wow. most part, they look like a donut, you know, a, a big chunk of rock with a near perfect hole bored straight through it. Um, we're not told the Florida natives had, you know, boring methods of boring through rock. Right. How'd they do that? Well, they did it. Or they took, you know, took advantage of, you know, small ho- roll, small holes already made in the rocks. Mm. Then they could kind of start, have a starting point and bore through easier. But regardless, some people say that the holes are natural. Well, the holes could be sometimes. Water drop, yeah, erosion. Now, there's some things called um, um, solution holes. There's places like Blowing Rock in the uh, east coast of Florida. It's right here. Mm-hmm, right. Now, um, you've got holes that can form in rocks, especially limestone. Now, these anchors do not show the same type of weathering or erosion. In many cases, they're perfectly bored. Perfectly, I can show you. Very perfectly bored, like telescopically, mm-hmm. straight through a rock. Send me that some pics. We'll, we'll put them up. 7,000, yeah. 10,000 pounds. These things are huge. And like they, trucks, dude. They, they can do. be termed megaliths. And like from the pyramids or, you know. Like the Easter Island people. The, yeah. Whoa. A lot of people compare it to those because they're half buried in the ground, a lot of them sticking up. Like people position them like they're very proud. Do you but, think it was the water level was higher and it was a flood and they dropped? Now, water level is something I'm, you know, always willing to talk about. But I would always like to remember or remind people or ask the people telling us that the water level used to be 300 feet lower back in time. Are these the same people telling us that Miami is going to be gone in Mm. a couple dozen years? Are these the same people who told us Miami was going to be gone by the year 2020? Yes. Are these the people who told us the earth was going to freeze by 2018? (laughs) You know, Al Gore and the rest. So, The sea levels have shifted substantially. They've gone down and they've gone up. Florida used to be a little group of islands. Florida's been a peninsula twice as big as it is today. Yeah, that's right. 7,000 years ago, that's what they tell us. Is that it was- I see it on the nature trails, that's what they say. Mm -hmm. So they might be off on those timelines. I'm always very critical. But nonetheless, these anchors are always close to where the water is and where the water was 6,000 years ago. They're awfully close. Very, very close. Yeah. So, so these are, number one, you, they have the same weathering around them as one would expect from a rock that had been submerged. I can show you many that were submerged, that were dredged out, pulled out by a crane. There's a sacrificial altar with two faces carved on it that was pulled up out of, pulled out, out of a Newport what? Ritchie near Tampa Bay. Yeah, that's right by Tampa. That has a male face and a female face. How do you know if it was, how is it a sacrificial? Because even being submerged in in water for that long, they can detect the caked on fruit and blood that's in this cavity in the rock. There's a hole that they would kind of spill their (laughs) offerings into, whatever it was. uh, So that was found in accordance with a bunch of anchors. And in fact, it may have been an anchor itself. Anchors were so worshipped by ancient peoples. One of the oldest words known to man, anchor. Um, you have it's a special word. Angkor Wat. You have, you know, um, it goes back to Enki. Enki, who's in an original sea deity, water deity. Really? Enki can be equated by me and a lot of historians to Neptune, Poseidon. Um, the god of the sea. Yeah. So anchors were worshipped by ancient peoples, and they put faces on them. Now, where Noah's Ark has landed, up in Armenia, near Turkey, the mountains of Ararat, where Noah's Ark is said to have landed, they have a lot of large stone anchors. The only large ones on, on par with those of Florida that I have ever seen in the world are on the top of Mount Ararat. Sorry, the mountains of Ararat. Yeah, in Turkey or something. Where Noah's Ark is said to have landed. Whoa. No. Noah's Ark landed there? 
Yes. And I think it took off from Florida, believe it or not. Whoa. Yes. So if we interpret those stories literally, uh, Noah's, sorry, Florida's 1936 Republican candidate for governor was E. E. Calloway. He did not win, but he, you know, he ran honorably and lost, but he was a very knowledgeable, well-accredited guy before that. He was a lawyer and judge. He was friends with many presidents, very respected guy. He developed a theory in, you know, shortly after that, that Florida was the original Garden of Eden. And he developed that theory. He arrived at that theory by... When he had time after he lost the pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of wow. time on his hands. I know you're no. getting at it. I didn't know all these details of this story. Mm-hmm. Wow. So he got uh, sent on a kind of mission from God after a relig- religious experience. And he was introduced to a mystic author by the name of Brown Landown, Dr. Brown Landown, who sent him off on this kind of crazy quest. Didn't send him on that mission, just told him he had a great calling ahead of him. And not to be vague, I'm being vague, but there's more details that you can read up about it. In the book, right, Iron Republic, he wrote a book. No, he wrote In the Beginning. In the Beginning. Yeah. Someone else wrote Iron Republic. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, in the beginning. You own a bookstore, you need to know these things. Mm -hmm. Oh my good. In the beginning, he wrote. 1966, he wrote that. Cool. And pretty much proves that if there is a literal Garden of Eden, you don't have to interpret those stories literally. But if we are interpreting them literally, they can only have been in one place. One place that is still known to man. Now, when a lot of those stories were getting written down, the Bible and such, they were not aware of the Western continents. They were not aware of the Americas, to what we're told. How could they then have incorporated the Americas in their search for places like that, those early, early places, those legends, like Eden, the Garden of Eden? They couldn't have found them in a place if they were limited to a different place. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 right. Not to mention the fact that according to every person who's ever written a book 6,000 years ago, you know, all the ancient traditions, all the ancient legends, that Noah, or his equivalent, depending on what tradition you're choosing, landed in Eurasia, but nowhere does it say he departed from Eurasia. Mm. In fact, if you're spending 150 days in a boat on the open waters, potentially up to 300 days, it only rained, rained for 40 days and 40 nights, but he was in the boat for about 150 at least about how long it takes to get to the other side of the world. Exactly. That's about very, very equatable to a transatlantic voyage. What a trip. Not to mention there's a current of water, very strong current, most ancient current of water known to man, the sacred Gulf Stream, which originates in the Gulf of Mexico, sends warm water to all these places you would never even have heard of. There'd still be ice cubes in the Ice Age if it weren't for the Gulf Stream. That's right. So, Do you think it's a divine thing? Yes, and it comes from Florida, and it is one signature that Florida is a special place. Another special place. It's right place. out here. Dude, it, it's close. It gets as mm-hmm. close as it gets to Jupiter. That's why... To the, America, right? I think. Mm-hmm. That's why Palm Beach is so so rich. It's one of the closest places wow. where the Gulf Stream comes to land. It's a symbol of ancient uh, seafaring dominance. Because it's rich waters. Mm-hmm. And it, it snakes in between the Bahamas and Florida right here between the Palm Beaches. And that's why Trump lives here. That's why many of the world's richest. And wh- what are the richest people in the world fly around on? Jets. What are they called? Private jets. What are they called? Gulfstream jets. That's exactly My right. My GS6. They're called Beep. Gulfstream. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what a trip. So... Oh my goodness, guys. This is so... Yeah. This is so good. You're so... This is so ahead of its time. How do we go get all this compressed knowledge out to the people, dude, because you're blowing my mind right now. Move to Florida. <laughs> it's all right uh, here. Places you, that the snow... The rich people do come here. Yeah. That is a good... That they is, figured it out. Places that snow hate humans, hu- hate humanity. Snow in winter is hostile to human life. Winter is hell. Speak Spanish, speak any Latin language. Winter and hell are the same word. Invierno. 
Yeah. yeah. Now, that's on purpose. Hell is cold. Dante's Inferno, the deepest lair, was freezing. Uh, it's anti-life. It's the punishment that we were punished with was winter. Seriously, that's mm-hmm. what it is. So, okay. So, the sun is our... Is that's, what it, yeah. it gets the, everything God's go- greatest face avatar representative in, in the natural world. That's a beautiful way to... Pull, to put it, God's God's what what you what you just call it? I forget. Avatar, something. His, his greatest representative. His greatest face. His delegate. His. You this know. is so beautiful, and I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. I hope everyone's getting a bunch of good stuff out of this, but it's so good. And but by the way, you're what you're saying is so right. The North, not Florida, mm-hmm. climate is hell. Like it seems, you know, we just have, mm-hmm. um, you know heating and all these modern systems but the sun stays on florida like we did have kind of the most we have the most the best climate to grow crops so the i believe i don't know though the majority of the world's population centers around the 31st to 30th parallel of the world really that garden of eden you know up near where e.e calloway was looking around it's 31 degrees parallel it's on the same exact parallel as the fake Garden of Eden that they show us in the Middle East, wow. which only has two rivers, one of which, one of which barely you know, flows. You're Up, saying the Tigris and the Euphrates or whatever? Those names were transplanted to Eurasia after the flood. Really? But those p- names originate in Florida. Florida on the border of Florida and Georgia on 31st degree parallel. The most interesting, mysterious parallel longitudinal line that the Earth has crosses through the world's only four-headed river system. The world's only four-headed river system, just like this, just like my hand. In the Bible. Equal four rivers. They talk about this. It goes up and it just (laughs) feeds into the Apalachicola River. It's the apple of Eden, the Apalachicola. And that's an ancient Indian word. And these four rivers go into one river. They expel into the Atlantic Ocean. Atlantic Ocean. Sorry, they expel yeah. into the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, yeah, Excuse yeah. Me. That's right. They're on the but other then, side. Ultimately, yeah. What a trip! So you're saying the those rivers they're talking about in the Bible were over here. Any Christian, any are here. Any Muslim, any Abrahamic adherent of any Abrahamic faith. I challenge to read the Bible, the Genesis whatever your equivalent holy book is, the earliest account of the Garden of Eden. Locate a place on earth that matches all the literal criteria. Florida is the only place that can do that, especially when you trace back the history of how the lands were lost via the flood. A place left one land, came to another, then they named, you know, New England. You know, uh, how many... When people land somewhere, they use the first first names they, they yeah, came with. Yes. England, you know, uh, New France, New, uh, New Mexico, New Jersey. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all, people are not that original. So they landed in Eurasia and renamed two of these rivers. There's not four. There never has been. Okay. Now, they cannot find a four-headed river system in the Middle East. It's barren. It always has been. The only times it's ever been fertile is when it took vast amounts of uh, labor to irrigate those lands in the Middle East, Syria, Iraq, to render them relatively hospitable to agriculture is such a labor-intensive process. It took thousands of slaves, thousands of years. Those places have been salted, yes. People would say that, oh, they were lush, now they're this. I don't think God would treat the Garden of Eden that way. I think the Garden of Eden would have a series of protections. Mm. Well, the Apalachicola area is an ice age refuge. It's one of the world's m- most biodiverse areas on earth. Yeah. Biodiversity hotspot, ice age refuge, meaning everything grows here. Dude, it's mm-hmm. so interesting. I'm I'm trying to like I'm trying to synthesize all this stuff. It's so good. And <laughs> and yeah, so my whole thing is it's like so this was all flooded out and mm-hmm. history was wiped and we all went over to the other side of the pond or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
I guess my question is, what's the end goal of this whole sure. deal? Well, how many, how many billions of dollars have we been spending on the Middle East for a fake Holy Land and a fake Jerusalem? A lot. A lot. That's yeah. one of the key issues today that you can even list off in regards to humanity. What's the biggest things we're dealing with besides hunger? So the fossil fuel, <clears throat> the climate change and stuff. The war in the Middle East. <laughs> and Endless. The, and the war in the Middle East. Are you familiar war. with the Crusades? You know? The Crusades you yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. We're still living in the Crusades. It's still a holy war. Over fighting over a pile of sand, a litter box as far as I'm concerned, with has no universal, no global relevance, save for the fact that they claim these stories in a book happened there. They didn't happen there. I'm telling you that. Mm. We can prove it. Everything after this Noah. This would save a lot of lives too, dude, if we understood this. Well, just, so look, at, ridiculous. just look at the Holy Land. Who's fighting yeah. over the Holy Land? The Jews and the Palestinians, right? Right. Where do the Jews actually treat like the Holy Land? And that's not even a bad thing to say. Where do they actually come to vacation and spend their money and Boca invest Raton. their time? Boca Raton <laughs> and Palm Beaches. Interesting, and, dude. So the Jewish people... You know, say what you want, good, bad. That's not any point I'm making right now. It's yeah. just, do they come to Florida? Yes or no? They do. A lot. At times of the year, Florida <laughs> is New Jerusalem, New Israel. It's the mini. So I welcome that. I think it's great. I think if they know it, I love it they man. should spread the word. Guess who else knows it? Cat's out of the bag, by the way. Everyone's, co <laughs> everyone's coming to Florida, so it's all right. Scientologists, <laughs> they know it. And Scientology headquarters is over in Clearwater, Florida. They've, they've bought up a majority of the city. They know it. Uh, they have a lot of insight. The Amish and the Mennonites. How do they know it? The only place in the world that they vacation is Siesta Key, or Pinecraft, Florida. You'll see Amish girls in bikinis riding riding bikes up and down the street. Really? And they're not on Rumspringer or whatever that. Oh, they're being... They're, they're, that's just the families are allowed to cut loose there. Got it. For some reason, that. Pinecraft, Florida, look it up. It's the Amish, uh, like, getaway. On the other coast. Who else? Um, the Mormons. The Mormons have bought up much of Apalachicola, Florida. Look up Mormon history. They call this their land of promise, Florida. They're, they're old um, heroes of their old ancient history. Whether you believe it or not, they focus on Florida. The same Apalachicola area they point to as the beginning of the Hopewell culture, ancient American, right? Mm -hmm. Group of artifacts and mounds and building style. This culture yeah. originates in the Apalachicola area, that same four-headed river system area. The largest oak tree in all of America is located right between two of these rivers in the Apalachicola uh, Chattahoochee River. The tree, mm -hmm. the record tree, oak tree. Yeah, really? big one. It's a contender for the largest on earth. Whoa. Single trunk is that is. How old? Do you know? I would say at least two thousand. Oh my goodness! There's trees that have been recorded at at six hundred years old that are not even a quarter its size. So, dude, so interesting. Like the deconditioning we need as a population is deep, dude. It t it takes so much. Like I'm done. A lot, like not as much research as you, at all. But I'm starting to un, like just start to envision how it really went down compared to what they told us. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely like tuning into the fact that this latitude. They say the latitude, because that was your one of your points you made mm -hmm. earlier. Most people live on this band of where the season hits mm -hmm. beautifully, like Florida season. Yep, thirty to thirty third, thirty. The 31st parallel. Got it. North. It's interesting. And they say the same plants that we could grow here grow on that same latitude all around. Largely. The planet, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's so interesting to think that, like, this is where the life... Mm -hmm. There's there's a story of four sacred rivers coming out of a place called Mount Kailash in Tibet, I believe. Not China. Tibet. Yeah, okay. And um, they say there are four sacred rivers stem from one spot in Mount Kailash. Okay. Mount Kailash is on the 31st, exact, precise 31st degree parallel. Jerusalem, wow. precisely on the 31st degree parallel. So the Holy Land. The, so how did this all get wrong? 
Back then, Noah, whoever his equivalent was, had, had some type of a compass, some type of locating apparatus. When they went to new continents, they couldn't just flash back to Florida. They had to do their best to find their way back home. So they traveled longitudinally, looking, measuring their position away from the North Pole, and pushed back down towards the ocean to where they reached back 31st degree parallel. On the other side of the equator. On the other side of the equator in Eurasia. It is there that they believed they had returned, or largely returned, or just gave up and said, well, this is the new garden. This is the new place. So the Garden of Eden was somewhere else in a different continent. I believe it was in Florida. Mm. But uh, if you're looking literally, you cannot find any evidence for it in the Middle East because it obviously was not there, could not have occurred there. Yeah, but you said Israel's Israel's over there on the 31st. Parallel. Yes, it is. Jerusalem goes Jerusalem. right through it, yeah. 31st degree. Have you been comes there? right over to Florida. Have you been there? I've not been to Israel. Dude, this has been this has been so good. I really appreciate it, Connor. Thanks for having me, Jack. Yeah, I hope you guys got something out of this at home. I would love to have you back to talk about more of this sometime. Sure. So good. Love to come back. Yeah, I'm gonna let this digest and have some new questions. Sure. For the new paradigm. Thank good. you, brother. Peace. We're in the garden. It's existential.